Imagine that you receive a desktop computer and a monitor as a gift. You set them up, sit down at your desk, press the power buttons for both devices, and wait for something to happen. The computer starts up and displays the operating system on the monitor. And then what? Well, without an input device, nothing. You need an input device to put the computer to work, to communicate instructions or transfer data so that the computer actually has something to do. Input devices come in all shapes and sizes, but the most obvious examples are the mouse and the keyboard. When you click the mouse button to select a command or when you use a keyboard to type something, you are using input devices. Other input devices, called pointing devices, move the pointer on screen. A microphone is an input device that lets you issue a command by speaking. When you transfer images to a computer from a camera, you are also using an input device. When you withdraw money from an ATM, the touch screen you press to enter instructions is the input device. Biometric input devices scan and transfer imprints of your hands, voice, eyes, or signature. Other input devices work with your voice so you can give commands by speaking. Everywhere you go, input devices help you easily and effectively interact with computers. A keyboard is an input device you manipulate by pressing keys. The standard QWERTY layout is named for the letter keys on the second row and lets you type with all ten fingers without looking at the keyboard. You can press letter or number keys and input commands directly by pressing function keys, such as F1, which typically opens a help screen. Other special keys, like Control and Alt, can be combined with character or function keys to issue additional commands, such as Control S for file save. Navigation keys, such as Page Up, let you move quickly around the screen. Some keyboards have media control keys that let you play and pause videos. Tablet computers and some smartphones have keyboards, either built-in or on-screen. On-screen or virtual keyboards are software-controlled and often use formats other than QWERTY to accommodate their smaller size and fewer number of keys. A wireless keyboard can eliminate clutter in a crowded workspace. If you must look at your keyboard to type and your work area makes it difficult to do so, a backlit keyboard can be useful, though it can drain battery power. You use a pointing device to move the pointer on screen. A mouse is a pointing device that fits under your hand. As you move the mouse, its movements are mirrored by the pointer on the screen. You click a mouse button to enter a command. A mouse might also include a scroll wheel for scrolling the display. A trackball is a pointing device with a ball anchored inside a casing. The trackball device is stationary, making it a good alternative to a mouse if you have limited desk space. You roll the ball with your fingers to move the pointer. A touchpad is a flat surface often found on laptop computers. You glide your finger across the pad to move the pointer across the screen. You tap the pad to input commands. Two buttons near the touchpad work like mouse buttons. A pointing stick is a pressure-sensitive pointing device the size and shape of a pencil eraser. Pointing sticks are embedded in the keyboard. You push the pointing stick with your finger in the direction you want the pointer to move. You use a pen input device to write, draw, or make selections on a touchscreen or graphics tablet. Pen input devices include the stylus and the digital pen. A stylus is a small plastic or metal device shaped like a pen. You use a stylus to press icons and buttons on a touch screen or to type text by tapping on an on-screen keyboard. A digital pen is more powerful than a stylus because it can include an electronic eraser or programmable buttons. A digital pen lets you write or draw on a tablet PC by pressing and dragging the tip of the pen on the screen.
A touchscreen is a visual display that responds to the touch of your finger, hand, stylus, or digital pen to input commands. Tablet computers, kiosks, and smartphones commonly use touchscreen technology. You interact with a touchscreen by making a motion called a gesture to input a command. You can tap or touch specific areas such as words, numbers, pictures, or icons to input a command or activate a new screen or menu. You can zoom in on an image or document by moving two fingers away from each other. You can zoom out by moving two fingers towards each other. You can tap once to click, tap twice to double click, and tap with two fingers to right click. Some computers, like smartphones and tablets, use touchscreen technology as keyboards. Most portable media players, like iPods, have touch sensitive pads that you manipulate with the touch of your finger to select songs, play video, or control volume and other settings. When you transfer pictures or video from your camera or smartphone onto a computer, you are using an input device. You can transfer digital video or image files directly from your camera via a USB port, or you can use a memory card slot to transfer images from the camera's memory card to a computer. Some video cameras save video directly to a DVD that you can then load onto your computer as input. Many laptops come with built in digital video cameras called webcams. Webcams are used for video conferencing or chatting. They convert your image and the words you speak to digital format and input the data into your system. That data is then displayed and played as output on a computer monitor. An input device called a scanner converts printed material into digital format. A scan head moves across the document to read and capture the information and then creates an image file. A scanner can be connected to a personal computer via a cable or USB port, or it can be wireless. The barcode reader that a cashier uses to record a purchase in a cash register is another kind of scanner. It reads the barcode and inputs item and price data into the cash register's computer. You use a microphone to enter voice or sound data into a computer. A microphone can be internal or it can be connected to your computer via a wire or USB cable. Some webcams include microphones you can use to chat. Microphones can also be wireless. When you speak into a microphone, software converts your voice into digital data, either by recording it as a sound file or translating it into text on the screen. To translate your voice to text, you need to have voice recognition software installed. Many software applications include this feature as part of their program. You can input music and other sounds into a computer by connecting an external device, such as a guitar, into MIDI and other compatible computer ports. Music production software lets you manipulate these sounds to compose new music or edit existing music files. A game controller is another kind of input device. When you play a video game, you use a game controller to control your actions on the screen. You might use a joystick, a game pad, a balance board, a light gun, or a wheel, depending on what you are playing. A joystick is a vertical stick or lever that pivots in a 360 degree range of motion. A gamepad is a handheld console with buttons and other input mechanisms you typically press with your thumbs to play a game. The popular Wii Remote Controller is a motion sensing gamepad. You control gameplay with your arm and hand movements rather than buttons. You use a light gun to shoot targets on the screen. Steering wheel controllers simulate on screen driving. Balance boards and dance pads respond to the movement of your feet instead of your hands to communicate with the game. Some game consoles, like Kinect for Xbox 360, remove the need for traditional game controllers. You are actually the game controller when you use Kinect. Kinect's motion sensor tracks your body's movements and captures them in the game. The devices once thought of as science fiction are showing up more and more in real life. Biometric technology analyzes a person's unique physical characteristics, like fingerprints or voice patterns, to confirm identity and grant access to restricted spaces or computer systems. A biometric input device is a data collection machine that creates a digital imprint of a physical characteristic and then transfers that information to a host system for review. 
fingertip readers are the most common biometric device. They are relatively inexpensive, with some models costing less than $100. Businesses and homeowners use them to restrict access to personal computers. Airport security and law enforcement officials use facial recognition systems to scan the faces of people trying to board airplanes or enter sensitive areas. They can compare these facial scans with database pictures of known criminals. Other biometric input devices create and transfer imprints of your hands, voice, eyes, or signature. Apple's iPhone 5S uses a fingerprint reader to secure access to the phone. The technology of tomorrow is arriving today. Probably the most readily available input method is your voice. When you give voice commands to a computer, you are providing voice input. To use voice input, the device must have voice or speech recognition capability to translate what you say into commands the computer can understand. Why is voice input so popular? Because we can talk three to five times faster than we can type. And we provide more accurate information when we speak than when we write or type. For example, we do not introduce typographical errors when we speak. Speaking also lets us use a computer when other input devices such as a keyboard or mouse are unavailable or hard to use, or we simply cannot see the screen. In addition, we can avoid significant wear and tear on our hands that comes from making the same motions thousands of times with a keyboard or mouse. Voice input helps us perform many daily tasks more quickly and easily, freeing up our hands and eyes for other activities. For example, you are using voice input when you ask for directions on a smartphone.